Okay, so today we're going to talk about five experiments that you can do in a dream to discover new things about your consciousness, maybe to learn new things about yourself, okay? And I've done a blog post about this, I'll put a link in the description, but I'd really like to just share it with you guys as well, because there may be some people who aren't on my blog, who are on my YouTube channel, and vice versa. So, number one, without wasting too much time explaining it, number one, telling your dream characters they're in a dream, okay? Now this is a really interesting thing you can do, because your subconscious mind populates the dream with dream characters which are representations of different parts of your mind, okay? So if you then go up, if you become lucid, and then you go up to a dream character and convince that person that they're in a dream, what do you think will happen? I'm not actually going to tell you what would happen in this one because it's really something that's interesting to find out for yourself, but it's really interesting, I guarantee. Try that one tonight. Second one, asking your nightmare or your fear what it represents and why you have that fear or recurring nightmare. Now, when you delve into lucid dreaming and you become slightly more skilled and you can become aware in your dreams regularly, one of the things you'll want to do pretty early on is to identify your nightmares and your recurring fears and then just have a conversation with them. Just go approach the nightmare. Say if you're scared of dogs, for example, like I used to be. Approach the dog in the dream, of course, and say, you know, why am I scared of you? What do you represent? Why are you manifesting yourself as a fear in my life? Why do I have this fear? And quite often the fear or the nightmare object, character, will answer back with a detailed explanation from your subconscious mind, because that's essentially what it is, it's a, a manifestation of your fear created by your subconscious mind in the dream, uh, and it will reply, and it will usually give you an explanation as to why you have that fear. Like, for example, for me, when I first approached my fear of dogs in a dream, the dog turned, I said, you know, why am I afraid of dogs? And the dog turned around to me and said, well, it's, you were chased as a child. Uh, and since then you've had minor trust issues and you haven't really been able to get over that until you just asked me right now. Um, and then the rest of the dream was spent sort of talking. It sounds really silly, but th I was talking with the dog for the rest of the dream and we identified some things I could do to, to sort of remove that fear and to work past it. So it's really interesting to do that because you can learn more about why you have certain fears and how to then overcome them. And this is one of the things that I... I suggest is one of the great benefits of lucid dreaming is that you can remove fears in this way. So, number three, looking in a mirror. Now, this is something, when you look in a mirror in real life, in reality, it's an exact mirrored, reverse of course, uh, image of you. Okay, it's, phys it's a physical image of you. So light is bouncing from the light source through onto the mirror, back to you. I think that's how it works. Uh, and so the laws of physics are at play. You, you see physically exactly what you are and how you appear to the world, whereas in a dream there aren't laws of physics, or at least they can be bent, and most of the time they can appear distorted. So when you look in a mirror in a lucid dream, you instead of seeing an exact representation of yourself, you see part of your residual self-image, which is your blueprint in your mind. If you've seen the Matrix films, this is shown perfectly in that where they're sitting around in the, in the white room. And uh, Neo, of course, when he's been woken up, is bald. And yet when they go into the dream world, into the Matrix, into the, the white room with the TV and the, and the leather chair, he has hair. And of course, he, after a while, asks himself, well, why do I have hair if I'm bald? Uh, and it's because of his residual self-image. It's a, an image of himself that he thinks he looks like which is stored in his mind. So therefore, when he has a dream, or in this case, when he's in being plugged back into the matrix, he then recalls that residual self-image and sees himself or appears as he thinks he appears, if that makes any sense. So when you look into a mirror in a lucid dream, you're seeing your residual self-image, which means you can directly view and look in front of you and see the image of yourself that you have. So it's a really good way of seeing if you consider yourself attractive, for example, if you consider yourself confident. And, but at the same time, it can be kind of scary because you tend to exaggerate your perceived uh, physical flaws. So say if you, if you uh, think that you have really big ears in a dream mirror, there is a good chance that that will be exaggerated and then played back to you. So you'll have massive ears in a dream mirror 
even bigger than they are in real life because it's an exaggeration of your residual self-image. But it's a really interesting way of seeing how you feel about the way you look and the sort of person that you are. Another Number four, moving on swiftly, speak to a psychiatrist or a counsellor. Now, this is a really interesting one because, as I said, in a dream, you speak to different parts of your subconscious mind, okay? Different representations of different parts of you as a person. So if you then go and speak to someone who is a psychiatrist or a counsellor, subconsciously, your mind will put all of the things that you hold about yourself and your thoughts and beliefs about yourself and your character and personality that you tend to ignore and divert your attention from, maybe things that you aren't proud of or things that you regret or have guilt about. Okay, All of these negative character traits will be given to the psychiatrist because your subconscious mind is thinking this is a you know this dream character is a psychiatrist he must have access to this kind of information because people go to psychiatrists to talk about problems and to identify their their flaws mentally and as a person so when you go and then speak to a dream psychiatrist okay in your dream they will have access to all of the information you normally ignore about yourself and maybe you don't even know is there. So say if you have a deep-seated regret about something, maybe you really regret leaving a past relationship or you have guilt about doing something bad in your life, your psychiatrist in the dream will know all of that. So you'll be able to almost speak to your mind and relive and discover memories that you often didn't even know you had. You'll be able to really access deep parts of your mind by doing this little experiment. So again, this can be kind of scary, this one, but it, again, it depends on the person. You know, if you have something really bad that you uh, are sort of trying to ignore and move on from in your, in your past, then maybe I wouldn't advise this one because the psychiatrist dream character possibly will bring that back up again and it may be distressing. You may wake up feeling kind of stressed and a bit upset, but if you want to give it a, if you want to give it a go, it's a really good way of understanding your mind and learning new things and discovering new things about yourself and as I said maybe you'll even have access to memories you didn't know you had before. Number five this is the last one uh, this video has gone a bit gone on a bit too long now. Uh, number five travel forward in time and meet your future self. Now this is kind of similar to the mirror experiment where you see your residual self-image but this time you're going to see your representation and belief about your future and your goals. So let's say, for example, that you have a goal of becoming a millionaire in the next 20 years in real life. Okay, So that goal is in your subconscious and hopefully your conscious mind in real life. Okay, Now, if you don't believe and trust that you will achieve that goal, then traveling forward in time to meet your future self in a dream will show that to you because your future self in the dream will be like uh, an average or a poor person working in a, a normal job. However, if you truly believe that you'll achieve your goal, subconsciously and consciously in real life, then when you do this experiment in a dream, you will see a representation of that. So you will see yourself successful and rich in the future. So it's a really good way of um, learning whether you truly believe in yourself and which things you truly believe. This is obviously directly relating to goals, dreams and aspirations. So I'll use another example. Let's say you really want to become a... Um, a Reiki healer. You want to heal the world with alternative healing uh, methods and techniques and you want to have a successful business, uh, maybe even a, an international brand or company to heal the world. Now let's say that you consciously tell yourself, yep, I'm going to do that in real life. That's something I'm going to achieve. But you subconsciously don't believe it and subconsciously doubt yourself. You will see that you will directly see whether you believe in yourself in the dream because you can't trick your you can't easily trick your subconscious mind in the, if you travel forward in time to meet your future self in a dream your subconscious mind will show you an exact rep, well an almost exact representation of who you truly believe you will become in the future so it's a really interesting way of just finding out what you truly believe and whether you will achieve your goals so hopefully this has been interesting. This is uh, five lucid dreaming experiments you can do. Of course, I would recommend to have a basic 
lucid skill set before attempting these because you will of course need to be lucid in order to try these experiments you know it's no good trying to do these things if you can't even control the dream in a normal situation so if you'd like information about that maybe go and check out my website there's some good guides on there or I would recommend you to sign up to my email list which if you go to howtolucid.com it's on the it's pretty much the only thing the front page is for is to get people to sign up to my email list so that I can give you a series of lessons on there okay so I'll, there should be a link in the description for my main site anyway but yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed this if you have any questions and comments please leave them in this video and I will reply to them and possibly make a, another video in the future as I said before I can't really improve these videos and the content I give on the website unless you let me know what I'm doing right or wrong. So if there's something that you'd like me to explain better, please let me know in a comment, email me, send a message on Twitter, Facebook, and then I can be aware of it and I can obviously improve it. So hopefully I'm doing right with these videos. I have been improving the whiteboard videos a little bit, maybe doing more illustrations and then trying to make the recording not lag so you can actually hear my voice as well. Um, yeah, but let me know. So thank you for watching. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That's quite important because uh, you won't get regular updates, of course, if you don't subscribe. Um, and another thing, if you're already subscribed, uh, and this is obviously completely optional, you might want to uh, get email updates when I upload a video because quite often, if you, especially have, if you have lots of just, uh, subscriptions on YouTube, they kind of mix into each other and it can be difficult to see... Uh, what you want to see if you've got subscriptions from many years ago that you never watch anymore they're still going to appear on your homepage so if you want to really make sure you get these videos and learn how to lucid dream properly then I would suggest to go into your YouTube settings and check the email updates box for this channel I mean it's completely optional but this way you can get email updates as well as hopefully seeing it on the homepage just so you don't miss anything and so that you can keep up to date with the content I'm sharing and hopefully learn how to lose your dream properly. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to hear your experiences. Please leave comments, uh, share the video, like, favourite, subscribe, all that stuff.